Hey, Facebook. I know I'm like one minute early, but I was super, super excited about our webinar that's today, Photography 101 uh, webinar. We're going to talk about all sorts of really cool stuff. And um, so what I have done is put um, the presentation in the link in the bottom of the video. So if you ever want to look over it again or, you know, see what's going on, you know, don't be afraid to click on that link. I'm going to have all my presentations on there for the next four weeks, so that's why you're going to see like a bunch of slides, so don't get overwhelmed. I have it broken down by each different day, so that way you can be on it. Um, but for those that don't know, I am Crystal Marshall from MarshallStudioPhotography.com, and a little nutshell about myself before we kind of hop into it is um, in 2010 I started doing a um, working for a nonprofit up in Maryland. And I basically just had a point-and-shoot camera, and I'll talk more about, you know, different types of cameras in a little bit, but I had a little point-and-shoot camera, and um, it was, it was just like attached to me all the time. I just walked around the, walked around the grounds, took pictures of the students, took pictures of the staff, and it was really neat at the end of the summer to like give a little photo book um, to the staff, like, thank you so much for working so hard. Thank you so much for like the difference that you made. And from then on, I was just hooked to um, photography, and I was hooked to um, just sharing that memory. And I got my first engagement shoot. Then I got my first um, wedding book. You know, wedding booked, but I hadn't done it yet. And in the fall, somebody said, "I want you to do my senior photos." Well, I was like, "Oh, I need to get a real camera." So I went to Amazon, of course, and bought the cheapest Nikon camera I could with the kit lens. And I thought I was pro, right? I thought I was like, I'm ready for anything. And little did I know that I have learned so, so much along the way. I mean, I literally had no one. I had, I, I was isolated, um, stay-at-home mom. I had poured myself into YouTube. I poured myself into books. I just kind of hustled. I mean, I just read every single thing that I could. And, um, you know, when I... Now that was, gosh, that was seven years ago that my, I started to stay home. Um, in 2012, it became an actual business LLC, which was woot, and I started just kind of going from there. So I vowed when I had a little bit more experience under my belt that I would mentor people and kind of share my knowledge. So that's what this webinar is about. I get so so many questions, emails. What camera should I buy? Um, what kind of lens should I need for this? So we're going to talk about all of that today. Um, kind of my goals for this webinar is to be as basic as possible. I want it to be for the person that's trying to get a camera for their you know, daughter or for their family because, I mean, yes, it would be awesome to hire a professional all the time. But I understand that, you know, hey, you just want to take awesome snapshots of your family. Totally fine with that. So we're going to talk about that today. Let me hop over to my presentation. I hope it's still rolling because I heard my camera kind of make this weird sound. And I'm kind of like paranoid. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what is photography. And let me pop you over here. What is photography? So this this point right here changed my life. It really, really did because I went years and years and years um, trying to figure out what my style was, trying to figure out kind of the, the crux of what made photography photography. When I went to the actual root word, photo, light, uh, graph, photograph, graph means to write. So photography, uh, writing a story with light and that is on my website it's the first thing you see on my website writing a story with light and when I found that out it changed everything it wasn't just about the camera it wasn't just about the lens it wasn't just about taking a picture of your son you know hitting their baseball for the first time it was writing a story and so now every time that I come to a family shoot every time I go into a wedding every time that I even pick up my camera I'm thinking what story am I going to write today with this picture? And that just changed, it changed everything for me. All right, so we have 
my son here. This is my son, who's three. Um, this is Caleb. And it was interesting because as I was preparing for this webinar, I was thinking, what different stories do I tell in my photos? So um, this is the same person, just in different lighting situations, same camera, same lens. Okay, so same camera, different situations, different lighting situations, changes everything. It changes the mood, it changes the story that I'm going to tell. So the first one, Mysterious, this was at a camping trip this year and he just kind of turned his head. The light was just coming right behind him, the sun was coming over the ridge, um, and it just makes it kind of this, what's happening, this smoky fog behind him. The second one is at the Children's Museum we always visit, and he was just kind of interacting with the music, dancing, and you see his silhouette there, um, very dramatic. Again. He's in a silhouette. He's completely dark. Um, whimsical, that's him at the park. He's just having fun. He's swinging. Um, here's him at the house in his room, writing a, you know, reading a book. And there's the window light coming in. Um, there's him in the backyard on the swing. Um, him, you know, swinging. And then there's him in the living room with the light kind of just, you know, edging out his face. Um, so, like I said, same camera, same lens different lighting, um, tells a completely, completely different story. So that was awesome for me to kind of go through my images personally and to kind of see, all right, well, what kind of story do I tell in the life of my child? So all of those were taken uh, with natural light. None of them were taken with flash. None of them were taken with studio light. None of them were taken with a super fancy camera even. I mean, it was just the basic camera that I got um, off of Amazon with with a hundred dollar two hundred dollar lens all of these pictures none of them were taken with super fancy gear super fancy equipment super fancy you know whatever uh, they were all taken just using the light around me so there you go so I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit so what makes a good photo so we're going to talk about that what makes a good photo just like what I said before it's not just about the camera, the camera is a tool, okay? Um, just like you ask a baker, oh, what kind of oven do you have? That's that's going to be a tool they use. What kind of what kind of uh, mixer do you use? I mean, that that's all a good tool. I mean, obviously, the best mixer is going to make the best cookies, uh, you know, the more efficient cookies and make it, their life easier. But it's not going to make them a better baker. A better camera does not make a better photographer a better photographer. It just kind of gives it a tool to hone in the skills that they already have. Um, it's kind of like when my husband, you know, works out in the backyard and he's making a shelf for me, a bookshelf. Um, he used to like literally hand saw all the beams together, hand screw them in. But then, you know, as we got more money, he has, you know, a, a chop saw, that, you know, a hand, you know, a machine saw. And then he has a... Um, you know, like a, gosh, I don't even know. See, this is how much I know about woodworking. Um, you know, like a hand screwdriver, like a power screwdriver. So those are all things that make his life easier, but it doesn't necessarily make him a better carpenter. So I don't know if that makes sense. So um, what makes a good photo? Is it the camera? Yes or no? It's mostly the story that you're telling, and it is only tool. It's only a tool to a better story. So here we have four images. All four were taken with an iPhone, the same iPhone. Um, all four were of my kids doing, you know, kid stuff. So we have um, them down here in the uh, the children's museum. You know, plane trains. Not really interesting photo. Don't really doesn't really tell much of a story. Okay, they're just playing. Here you don't really know what's happening. We know they're somewhere. They're kind of in the corner. Doesn't really tell a story. Here we have some feet. Um, upper right, some feet. You know, it kind of tells a story. You don't really understand. Uh, what's happening but the the upper photo on the very very top left is my daughter at the park and I all I did was take a photo of her I saw the reflection of the water and she was just you know taking a stroll taking a walk in the water and um, I, it just really tells a story it, it makes you contemplate the image it makes you think so that's kind of a wrap-up of that um, again, this is my daughter. This is a photo I actually took and I just reversed it in my phone with the app that comes with the iPhone. I just kind of like turn it around and then I turn it black and white. 
an Instagram. So it wasn't really a super fancy camera. I didn't use Photoshop. Like it was literally like this is what I took. So again, it's not the camera. It's the photographer seeing the world around them. Okay, so let's talk about there's so many different kinds of camera choices. Uh, which one do you pick? It's kind of kind of depends on let me hop over here. So it kind of depends on one, how much time do you have? Um, how much time do you want to dedicate to photography? If you just want something quick, if you want something to pull out, you want something you can just upload. So we're going to talk about that today. It all kind of depends on what kind of photographer you want to be. Okay. Um, so here you go. What makes a good camera? Is it megapixels that's like the biggest thing you always see like it has 25 megapixels it has 50 megapixels it has 27 well you know what if that really it is it matters but not really because even professional level cameras that you're gonna see like wedding photographers have their cameras are only like 12 to 18 megapixels I mean I think the camera that you're seeing right now is like maybe 10 megapixels you know um, and that and at the time I bought this camera for like nine hundred dollars okay um, but anyway it's it's yes that matters because it's how much little 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 tiny bits of information is in the shot so it does matter but it's not really the huge huge issue that makes the camera professional or not it's honestly about the sensor the computer chip basically the you know the the motherboard as it will inside um, capturing those images and the better the camera the the more expensive the camera the better the sensor and the sensor is the thing that it's kinda like when you um, are going into a dark room and your eyes adjust to the light and it's you know really dark in there but your eyes are kinda seeing in the dark it's kinda like that in your with your camera the better the camera the better that it can see in the dark focus in the dark take good pictures in the dark so really it's it's that is going to uh, make a camera awesome you know or not awesome okay so that's kind of the breakdown of that let's see here all right so let's do a little uh, fun thing which was taken with more with a more expensive camera was it shot a of the ramen which is this was like three days ago that I did this okay or was it shot B now for those that follow me on Instagram don't tell the secret because you guys already know but it actually both were taken with my iPhone yes I know it's hard to believe but both were taken with my iPhone um, the first one was taken let's see if I have uh, I don't have it oh yes I do so the first one was taken um, just with the overhead uh, light the chandelier light that's in my dining room and I just kind of took a shot boom that was what it was the light is very flat it's very yellow the the background is very blah it just looks so a lot of times when you go to a restaurant you want to take a picture of your food and this is what you get and you're like oh you know I have the most awesome ramen and people are like Ugh. you know okay so the second one how is it different it was exactly the same bowl all I did was put a cutting board underneath so that it was um, you know a different texture and then I uh, well if if it was during the daytime I could have just put my bowl near a big window okay but hypothetically that's what I would have done but it was 10 o'clock at night by the time I actually ate because you know motherhood okay I have three kids um, and so what I did was I bought this selfie light for like five bucks on Amazon of course because they're awesome and I basically just went like this over the bowl of soup that was it and I took a photo with my iPhone okay so it's the secret like I said before the secret to a good photo is not necessarily the camera it is about the story that you're telling with light you could do the same effect with an eye with a, um, a flashlight with an LED light with a fluorescent bulb you know you could anything with a beautiful white light like an LED light or the light that you're seeing right now which is like a, a soft white bulb with an umbrella okay so that that is a little um, trick of the trade here Let's do another one. Which one was taken with a more expensive camera? Okay, was it the apples or was it the pad thai looking food? 
It was actually the Pad Thai looking food. I took that maybe a month ago and I was at Noodles and Company, which I love. Okay. And I was just kind of in the back of the restaurant. And there wasn't any natural window light. I just stuck the camera over, took a shot. It wasn't even like really good lighting. And that's what I got. It wasn't very appetizing. Where the apples was taken with the first camera I ever got from Amazon, the one that I did that first shoot with, with a kit lens, which I'll talk about the different lenses, but it was basically the, the lens that came with it, not anything fancy. And um, the lighting was just so interesting coming into my kitchen, onto my island, and there you go. I actually sold that on my Etsy store for a long, long time. So that was when I first started out. So again, writing a story with light, if it's more interesting light, it will be a better photo. Here's a third example. Um, so this picture on the left is of my daughter and my uh, late grandma. And I had just got my DSLR then, and I, I was like, oh, super excited. Well, if you zoom into the, the photo, it's hard to see now, but if you zoom in, like she's completely out of focus. Like she, you can't even see her. Um, and my daughter's eyes had this weird like ghost effect from the pop-up flash. And where this photo was taken with my iPhone, like two weeks ago at Bush Gardens, okay, um, with my daughter just standing there next to a tree. So again, it's about um, honing in your skill, honing in that craft that you have, um, practicing, 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 okay? So yes, having a good camera is important, but if you don't know how to use it to make beautiful, beautiful photos, then it's not really going to be worth its money to you, okay? So, let's talk about the first type of camera is obviously your phone, like what I've been talking about. The phone is a very, very powerful tool, okay? Uh, pros about having a phone. I'm trying to make this like as lined up as possible, sorry. There you go. So anyway, so your phone, it is very small and convenient. A lot of people come to me and they said, you know, why do I even want an actual camera when I have my phone? And that is an awesome point. Um, phones are great because they're very small and convenient, you can fit in your pocket. Um, nowadays, even just a basic phone that you get from Walmart is probably going to be better, you know, than like five or six years ago, an actual point shoot camera. Um, image quality is not as good as an actual, you know, DSLR, and I'll talk about the different kinds in a, in a second. Um, the bad thing about your phone is it was really never... The sensor, like I said, the brain of it that captures the images, it was really never meant to replace an actual uh, camera. It's, it's meant to have snapshots, and then, like I said, with great lighting, with great creativity, you can take some amazing photos. But, um, you know, I would never obviously shoot a wedding with a phone because it just doesn't do good in dark situations. Um, it's very limited on what you can do because the, the lens is very wide. It's very, very wide. And that's why people, when they take selfies of themselves, um, they wonder why their nose and their forehead and their eyes look so big. But then, like, it's because the, the lens on this, again, is not made for portrait work. It's made for, like, a really, really long shot, like a really wide angle shot. Um, so, obviously, if you want to use your phone, that's awesome, it's very convenient, you can go right to social media platforms, but there are some drawbacks to using your phone. So I definitely, I use my phone to do little snapshots of the kids, um, you know, upload to Instagram, but if, if I wanted to, like, document my entire child's life on a phone, that would have to take a lot of creativity, take a lot of work, um, there's just a lot of situations where you really need a better camera. For example, if they're performing at a ballet or performing in their first baseball game and you're trying to zoom in on your camera and it's super, super dark, that's probably not the best way to like record, you know. So that's just my personal opinion. Um, okay, so here's a second type here. Dear, how do I sound? Do I sound good? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. Perfect. Because um, my camera keeps clicking in and out. Okay, so anyway, second type of camera, point and shoot camera. Um, this would be, now, the reason I have this particular photo is because a lot of people get confused and think, this is a super nice camera. Um, yes and no, it's considered a point and shoot unless it says digital SLR. This is not considered a, an SLR, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, 
They are small and easy to use uh, beside your phone. Um, they have a, a lot of good, you know, beginning level customization, um, you know, things that you can, you know, change and little effects that you can do and you can, you know, put them in your camera and edit them and that kind of thing. So if you are looking for kind of a, a segue point between a phone and more of the expensive cameras, maybe this would be for you. Um, unfortunately, the, the, really the nutshell of a point and shoot like this and a DSLR is you cannot uh, change the lenses on this. Like the lens that's in it is, is going to stay. Where like I'll, I'll talk, talk about this in a second, but a DSLR you have multiple, multiple lenses and accessories that you can put on it. Um, okay, so that is a point and shoot. Let me hop over to here. So we have a new player in the field now called the mirrorless camera. And the mirrorless camera basically how it works is on um, the DSLR, which is right here, they're very big and bulky. And the reason for that is because really the, the idea of it comes from way back, like 100 years ago, where you have like the light coming in through the lens and then the mirror that, that reflects on another mirror that reflects onto the sensor or the film way back when. Um, so that technology really hasn't changed oh so much in the DSLR, where the mirrorless Obviously, there is no mirror that reflects to a mirror. It's basically you capture the image onto uh, the memory card. Um, the mirrorless is great because there is a lot of lenses. Um, a lot of companies now have some really great mirrorless options. But honestly, um, I've done a lot of research on them. And for my type of professional work, I cannot be in that game because they're really not out of focus fast enough for me in my wedding work. Um, the um, dark, when you shoot in the dark with this kind of camera, it's not going to be nearly as sensitive as more of a pro level uh, DSLR. Um, they are pretty much the same cost as a DSLR or even more expensive, especially if you get accessories for them. Um, so that would be kind of the the cons of a mirrorless. Um, the good thing is very lightweight. They're like half the size of a DSLR. You can throw them in your bag. Um, I actually do want to get one for if I do travel and they're they're not as you know big and bulky so that you know maybe they'll be more deterrent against people you know stealing them. Um, but for my personal work and what I do with a lot of weddings and what I do with a lot of you know flash units and that kind of thing this this probably wouldn't be what I do but I know a lot of people on Instagram that the mirrorless is for them and that's awesome and um, their work is amazing so um, so that's the mirrorless um, let's talk about DSLR so the DSLR is obviously where let me pop me over here okay so the DSLR is what I'm holding here and it is a digital single lens reflex so basically it's a lens it's a camera where you can take off the lens, this is a Nikon um, camera, or some people would say Nikon camera, some people do Canons, some people do Fujifilm or Pentax, but most of the players that you're going to see at Best Buy is a Nikon or a camera, uh, a Nikon or a Canon, and they come with various different lenses. This is a 50 millimeter, and I'll talk about the different kinds. The one that I'm shooting with now is a 35 millimeter. I have so many different uh, lenses because different kinds of things, okay? Um, the camera is great if you want to be a little bit more serious, if you want great image quality. Um, there's so many different levels that you can get in the DSLR game. The ones you see from Best Buy are kind of the lowest, uh, the lowest kind of beginner student levels. Um, you'll have to go on Amazon or, or um, B&H or different online distributors for more of the upper level uh, ones. But you can get a beginning level, and I still have mine, and I actually donate it to the youth group for them to travel with for about $400, uh, which is awesome. Um, but if you buy a certain brand, like when I said I, I bought my first Nikon camera, I had to stick with that brand because all the accessories and all the lenses fit with that brand. So you can't, like, um, you know, get a really good deal on a Pentax camera, but then, like, oh, let me put a Nikon lens on it. It's just not going to work. Um, except if you do, like... Sigma or Tamron lenses that have that certain kind of uh, mount for that. So that's the only 
um, stipulation. So the price and the skills needed to use an SLR and, and the mirrorless level are a little bit more advanced and more complicated. You will need to edit your photos that are from you know, these cameras if you're going to shoot more on the, the intermediate and enthusiast level. So that's, that just takes more time. Okay. Um, more modern levels now do have Wi-Fi capability and video capability, which is great. Some of the, um, the other cameras maybe don't have as good video quality. So that's kind of all four cameras uh, summed up. So let's look at some examples. There's me and my husband doing our thing. We are in the backyard. Here's me and my husband doing a... We were in the backyard of our house and it started snowing and I set up a little flash. Like it was like a video light or something. And I just like had the camera on a timer and boom. So love that photo of us. Of course I'm biased but... Alright, so here would be a point and shoot example. Okay, there's a Kodak Pix Pro, Pix Pro uh, 16 megapixel camera with optical zoom. So it's basically telling you it has a pretty, pretty um, high megapixel count. Um, the, the little lens that's going to come out, it's going to come out to like four times the zoom that you need. Um, but it is $63. So if you want to get this camera, personally, I would not get this camera if you want it to like document your family's history. It would be a great camera for a you know teenager, somebody that's starting off, um, you know, maybe, a, maybe a tween, um, maybe a college student, somebody that can kind of bump it around, but it's only $63, so it's really not going to be the best image quality. Honestly, a phone might be a better image quality. You know, so that's just my personal opinion. Um, here would be a another uh, point and shoot example, more of a step up. Um, getting a Sony 20 megapixel high zoom camera with 35 um, zoom. So, and getting refurbished is great. Personally, I get a lot of my gear refurbished. So, this would be another example of a point and shoot. It is not a DSLR um, because the lens does not come off. To change so you are stuck with that camera um, again this this would be a nice step up again it's about the price and and how sensitive it is in a dark place but honestly for for almost three hundred dollars you could go and get a DSLR with better image quality and um, you know get like a used lens so I'm going to talk about that in a second um, but personally I, if you're gonna get into this price range I would just step up into the DSLR but that's just my opinion and if you just want something really easy, maybe this is for you. Um, here you go. So this would be an example of what you're going to see during Christmas time. Let me uh, squish that down. There you go. So this would be an example of what you're going to see during Christmas time. You're going to see a bundle just like this. You're going to see maybe a Canon or a Nikon bundle. It's going to come with the camera. It's going to come with maybe a kit lens. It's going to come with a bunch of different things like this. So let's kind of talk about this. Um, I'd say a lot of people, they just buy this and they think, oh, this is great. I'm going to have all this stuff. Um, yes and no. A lot of this stuff, it, I personally would buy a lot of the things individually because it's probably going to be better quality for the price. But um, So let's talk about it. So we have memory cards. You need those. Yes. Um, this flash, personally, I wouldn't. This, this particular flash, I feel like it's crap. Because it doesn't move, it's just like a straight flash like to their face. So I'm going to talk about that in another lesson. But personally, I don't really feel like that's really worth being in there. Um, memory card reader, you need that. Memory card wallet, maybe. Um, these zoom, this is like a zoom and macro ring. Basically, you screw it onto your uh, lens. And it can um, be, be a poor man's version of a way to zoom in or or uh, take a closer picture without having to buy uh, something else. <clears throat> then you have like a lens cloth, you have a tripod, which personally you can get like a better quality, you know, tripod from Amazon, uh, basics. Um, a lot of these filters that are going to come with it, you're not really going to use them that much. Um, a lens cloth, yes. A bag, yes. So, so are you really getting a good deal? Personally, I think that you could just buy the camera body only and then get the lens, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, 
getting a like a 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter that is going to do better low light situation, better image quality, and then you don't have a lot of this stuff that you're not going to use. But that's just again something I had to learn because I, I was like, oh, this is great. I'm going to just buy everything. But are you going to use it? Maybe yes, maybe no. So here would be an example of a Nikon one. Uh, this is a Nikon uh, D3300. The D stands for digital. Just found that out recently. Um, so I have the G3100 as my first camera. So this is kind of like the same level of my first first camera. So again, it comes with a bag, comes with a memory card, comes with uh, a little cloth, comes with a battery charger. Very good. Um, so this one is different. So we have a kit lens, 18 to 55. What do those numbers mean? Um, the 18 to 55 is just the the smaller the number the wider angle the more picture that you're gonna see in your camera so if you see a, a lens that's say 18 then you're gonna have this really really big uh, wide angle 55 it's gonna be a little bit closer it's gonna be like a, a headshot like what we're looking at right now um, then if you're gonna see a little bit closer like let's say you have a maybe like a 70 to 300 lens or something that came with it. Um, that's going to be really, really up close. So if you're going to be in the, in the bandstands cheering your son on in the baseball game, you want that long, long lens to get there. You don't want the 18 to 55. So I don't know if that helps anyone. I did not even know that, and so I had to do a lot of research early on. So that's going to save you a lot of time. Okay, so... Um, obviously, we have this F stop here. A lot of people are like, what does that mean? Well, this F 3.5, 5.6, basically it just means how much light is going to enter your camera through the lens. The, the more expensive uh, the cameras, the more expensive the lenses, the more natural light are going to come in. So this is a 50 millimeter 1.8, which means that the opening of the lens, I don't know if you can actually see how wide that's going to get. Look how beautiful that is. Um, this would be an example of like a three point, maybe a 3.5 here. See how much light is actually not coming into your camera. And this would be like a 5.6. Um, if you, if you are, you know, on auto, which most people are, your camera is probably going to be like this. So that's not going to allow a lot of natural light in. It's basically like the, um, pupil of your eye allowing a lot of light in from a dark place. So that's kind of why I'm going to touch more about that in a second. But that's kind of what those numbers mean. All right. <clears throat> so this this is another example of a bundle. I'll hop over here. This bundle includes an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. That's like the kit lens everybody gets. This is a 70 to 300 lens like I talked about. Super, super close up. It comes with a memory card. It comes with a flash, which personally, I don't really use a flash like this again. Um, <clears throat> um, okay, what does this ISO sensitivity mean? That That's basically how well your camera can see in the dark. And even though it says 25,600, honestly, with a camera like this, you can really only go up to maybe 800 to 1,000 before you start to really see a lot of grain. Um, honey, can you give me water? Because I forgot to get some. Thank you. Um, so anyway, so that's what that uh, ISO has only really been in the game in the last mm, maybe 10 years or so because back in the day when there was just film cameras, we only had uh, two ways for your camera to kind of receive light. We had the aperture, which I talked about, which is the opening of the lens. And we talked, and I haven't talked about this, but we're going to talk about this in another lesson. But the shutter speed is how fast your camera actually closes to receive the light. Thank you, sweetie. Um, but the ISO, which is an acronym that basically just stands for like international. Anyway, it, it's just random. Um, um, abbreviation that really nobody really knows what it means but it basically means how sensitive your camera is to darkness okay so if you're gonna get a camera for a wedding photographer like the cameras I use we have to shoot in dark in the dark places you know dark 
uh, reception lighting, DJ lighting. So we have to have cameras that have really good night vision, okay? Um, a camera like this is not really going to have a good night vision because of the price and the sensor, like I talked about before. So that's kind of what that is. Um, this processor, how fast the, the camera is going to write on the memory card so it doesn't jumble up. Um, Bluetooth and SnapBridge software for instant sharing, basically, uh, if you have a camera like this, it's going to be able to upload mobily uh, to the internet, which is great. So that's kind of going back to the phone, you know, a con about DSLRs, a lot of times they don't go online. This might be a good option for you. Okay. Um, all right. What is the difference in brands? All right. Oh, what is the difference in brands? Now, a lot of people, like I said, I do Nikon. A lot of people do Canon. Um, they're all great brands. I'm, I'm just saying I do Nikon because that's what I bought early on, and you have to stay with the same brand, like I talked about. But um, it's kind of like when you drive a Toyota versus a Honda. They're still great cars. They're still going to get you there. Just it's the, the ergonomics of, you know, where the buttons are placed, um, the feeling that you get when you hold them, the feeling when you get when you drive a Toyota versus when you drive a Honda, their buttons are placed in different places. That's basically, um, in a nutshell, they're all great brands. Every year, different brands have different sales. So, you know, one year, Nikon will have a really, really, really great camera. And then the next year, Canon will have a really, really, really great camera. I mean, they're just competitors. So, um, like I said, once you have a brand to stick with it, you know, so that's it. Connection is successful. Okay, good. So apparently I got offline for a second. Do you see me still? Okay. So anyway, my husband is checking if I'm online still. Okay, am I good? Okay. Okay, sorry, sorry, back. My computer was like, um, I'm going to freeze up. Um, okay, so what about lenses? Lenses are different ways to tell your story. So we have um, like a telescope that people use to like see far away things close up, okay? That would be like this. Let me show you my baby, my, my, my fourth baby, after my, my three children. So this would be my baby. Uh, this gets really, really close, uh, a headshot. So this would be an example of a telephoto lens, so something that is, you're trying to see something far away close up. So that is that. This would be considered kind of like regular you know glasses like what you you know go out so this is a nice little portrait lens this is a 50 millimeter um, let me show you uh, this one is a 35 millimeter and basically it is um, a little bit wide angle um, so you can get a little bit of the room a little bit of the story so I use this a lot for weddings 35 millimeter this would be a macro lens. A macro lens is like a microscope. You get it? A microscope sees things really, really tiny. Um, this is kind of like that. This is what I use for like baby's eyelashes, wedding rings, engagement rings, little details of a wedding. So that's different lenses that I use um, on my camera. And all you got to do is change them. So when you have, especially when you get into the DSLR realm, you have all these different options for you to tell that story. So let's say you have um, the bride and groom far away, but you want to kind of tell the more story. I'm going to grab my 35 millimeter to kind of see the cathedral, see the stained glass windows. But let's say I want to get their kiss, right? I want to get their kiss. So I'm going to grab this and get really, really close up on them and I can just see their heads right there. So um, just different tools, different tools, okay? Lenses are different ways to tell your story. They are different ways to see our world. And I talked about that little aperture number before. So here's a little slide to kind of break it down. So we have um, most of the lenses that you saw hold, me hold were called prime or fixed lenses. They are lenses that do not zoom. The only lens that I have that zooms is this. You actually physically see it. Well, you can't because it's a pro lens, but the ones that you're going to get from Walmart, let's see if you can see it. Do you see a little bit? It's an internal zoom. I don't know if that makes sense, but the one that you're going to get with your camera in the kit, you actually going to see it uh, zoom in and out. Okay. Um, the ones on the top, we have that 35 millimeter right here. 
Um, the one I'm shooting with, here's a Canon 50 millimeter. Here's a Sony mirrorless that goes with the mirrorless. Um, what does that 1.8 mean? The 1.8, like I said before, is how big the opening of your camera can receive natural light. This would be 1.8. This is this is beautiful. This creates that beautiful, beautiful buttery uh, background that you love to see so much. It's it's because of this. Ooh, I gotta clean my lens. <laughs> that's another that's another whole issue right there. So many different things. Um, a zoom lens on the bottom. A zoom lens would be a, a lens that actually zooms into taking the picture. It goes zoop like that. Um, here's a Sony mirrorless uh, lens, and here's a Tamron lens. You see this 50 to 210 millimeters. It goes from 55 to 210. Um, 3.5, that just means that it can go to 3.5, the opening of the aperture can go to uh, 3.5. So this would be, I'm trying to find the opening here, about 3.5, right, maybe right there. So not, not super, super big, like a 1.4. This is like a 3.5. So that, that's pretty good for, for a zoom lens. Um, let's see here. This Tamron 70 to 300, it can get really, really close, but that 4.5 is not going to allow a lot of natural light in. Therefore, you couldn't use this particular zoom lens in a dark place. Um, I'm going to talk more about this in the, in the third webinar with controlling your camera. But um, you're, it's not going to receive a lot of natural light in. Your images are going to be pretty dark unless you know how to compensate for that. So that's kind of what makes lenses that you're going to get with your camera, um, good or bad, is really that ability to open up very, very wide to receive a lot of natural light in. So like this would be the lens that I use for weddings. And it's very, very big, very, very heavy. But it receives a lot of natural light in by just opening up the aperture ring. And it can go to 2.8, which is which pretty which is like you know pretty good if you're in a, a dark room, a dark chapel. So that's that's going to receive a lot of natural light in. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna see this slide later on as the class progresses. Okay, so the kit lens, I actually don't even own a kit lens anymore, the 18 to 55 that comes with every DSLR camera that you're going to get from Best Buy or Amazon. Um, I actually don't even own it because I don't even use it. I mean, honestly, um, it's not my style. It doesn't create that beautiful, beautiful uh, buttery background that I really, really want. Um, so most people would say, but it came with my camera, so it's okay, right? Um, yes and no. I know a lot of people that, that do use it, but if you're going to get images like this turtle up here with the, you know, it was in the aquarium. It was super dark. Um, having that, that beautiful, beautiful buttery background is not going to get, you're not going to get a kit lens uh, picture with that. Um, and I'll show you a little bit more. Okay, so this would be an example of the kit lens is my son this is like mm, six months ago and this is um, we're at the park so we're here it's a kit lens uh, 18 to 55 4.5 so this is this is what you would get with your camera so it's a nice it's a nice picture but you do see a lot more of the trees here um, he's not really popping out of that background that well um, this would be an example of this lens this uh, uh, I think it was like a hundred dollar hundred fifty dollars um, lens I got and I sold my kit lens for this um, this is the 50 millimeter I mean look how beautiful buttery that looks I mean that is just gorgeous love love um, this would be another example of a kit lens where you can see that sidewalk here you can see a little bit of that uh, grass but here completely blown out completely buttery um, again, it's all about the lens. It's not about um, the camera. It's all about that lens receiving all of the natural light coming in through right here. Just receiving all of that, just blowing it out. Where a kit lens would be here, a prime lens or a fixed lens would be there. Okay, 
Um, here we go. So this would be another example of a the 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 lens the la, 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 the lens that comes <laughs> with your camera here. Um, it's not very fast as uh, because it wasn't made to catch motion really fast. It, it wasn't really made for that. Where a prime lens, I mean, it is really going to freeze those leaves midair. I mean, it is just going to like, whew, love it. And you see that beautiful background in the back? Love, love. Okay, so I have an, I have, let's say you did go and buy it on the SLR. Um, what do all the buttons mean? Okay, let me grab this camera right here. What do all the buttons mean? I'm going to pop over to here. So this would be uh, the Nikon version. Where's the Canon? Okay, this would be a Nikon version. Let me zoom you in here. How do I zoom you in right there? Okay, so we have uh, the buttons. So we have right here, uh, turning it on. Right here on the top, turning it on. We have, a lot of times you have the uh, video record button right there, or sometimes it's in the back. A lot of times in, it's in the back here, that red button right here. Um, this is a, a screen that you're going to see. Uh, maybe you won't have that screen and you'll have to trust the back of your camera to do that. You'll trust um, looking at the back of your camera. And the info button will tell you exactly what the screen would. So the info button would do that. So here we go. This button right here on the top tells you what kind of focus you want. Do you want it to be um, like a cross looking picture? Do you want it to be like a dot? Um, telling your camera, I want the focus to be a spot. I want you to like tell me, boom. That's what I like to shoot with. Um, if it's the cross hairs, it honestly it confuses me. I like just knowing the focus is here. Okay. Um, this button right here I don't really use much. This plus minus. This is um, kind of a if you want a really quick button to make your photo brighter or, or, or darker, I don't personally use that, but a lot of people do. So that is that. Um, this particular button here, I don't even have that button on mine, honestly. Um, I think that means that you can take multiple images at once, but again, I don't have that button on mine. I think this is like a, a different version of an icon. The AF means um, autofocus, putting on. So this is the dial. This is where you're going to see most of the um, information that you're going to do. So on the dial, uh, mine looks a little bit differently because it's a different advanced model, but this is going to be the dial that you're probably going to see on most cameras. I'm going to talk about Canon in a second. Um, M means manual, like you move everything yourself. That's what, what I do. Um, the, app, the A means you're only controlling the opening of the lens, the aperture which a lot of people I recommend if you're just starting out you don't know where to start and you want to take uh, more advanced pictures but not ready to get full in manual I would suggest doing the aperture just changing the opening of the lens um, shutter speed shutter mode the S I would recommend that if you are shooting sports and you want a little bit more advanced um, program you can set like a program like you can set like a pre-programmed look like if you have like a certain studio mode or something that so that's more advanced the green button right here I call that the green button of doom no that's the auto button so every time when you get your little camera out of the box and you turn the auto button um, the camera is thinking for itself now back in the day way back like in the 80s um, there was no auto button there was no um, smart camera computer intelligence I mean it was you had to know what you were doing. There was no way you could look in the back of the camera. There was no way of knowing or seeing what you could do. So having an auto button on the DSLR is pretty cool. Um, and I, I, I flip to it sometimes if I'm like set in a certain way and I'm going from you know inside the aquarium to outside. I'm just auto done. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I use it sometimes too. But if I am doing a wedding or a port portrait shoot, I would never use auto because I feel like I'm smarter than my camera and I have a certain look that I want. But, um, but okay, so if you're just starting out doing these little presets, and I'll talk more about this later, um, the no flash preset, I would try that first. If you don't want that horrible pop-up flash to come up, 
um, the portrait preset, the mountain landscape, the running uh, child. So these are all different presets that you can use to start off with when you um, just kind of want to see uh, different things. Oh, oh, buddy, I just fed him too. So here would be the play button where you can see your photos. Here would be the menu options that you can choose different, um, you know, ways to edit the photos and that kind of thing. Uh, there's the the zoom in, the zoom out, zoom in, info button, the trash button. Um, this is the toggle keypad that you can go up and down through the different options. Here's a little uh, dial to get your shutter speed or your aperture. You can change that, obviously, if you get have more advanced. This button right here is like a custom button that pros use. Personally, I never use it. Um, so that's the Nikon. Okay, so let's talk about Canon real quick. It's going to be very similar, just kind of a different layout. Again, um, this would be like a retouch button if you are inside the camera um, you know menu is up here info is up here we have a little dial here so you see a lot of the same buttons just in different in different places here instead of just an a for aperture you have an av i don't know why it's got it so maybe some can of person can tell me instead of shutter you have tv i don't again i'm not a can of person um, here's the ISO button. So all these buttons control the camera in a different way. It's kind of like learning to control an instrument. Learning, con learning to play an instrument for, for the first time. You have different controls, different ways to modify the instrument, how it sounds. So all of these buttons, I know it's a lot of buttons, um, can tell you, I mean, you can, you can manipulate them to tell your story. So personally, I don't hardly ever use half of the buttons are on my camera. I honestly just put it on manual. I adjust the shutter speed and the aperture, what I need. I take the picture. Um, I see I see it on the, the thing. I, I press play to review it. I mean, that is, honestly, I don't even use half the buttons that I have on my camera um, because that's just not the kind of person I am. I like to just take the picture and then worry about it later. So, so don't feel overwhelmed if you can't figure out everything. Okay. So with photography, it is a very, um, I'm going to say this, it's a very expensive hobby slash business. So with buying a camera, um, there's tons of other things that you may or may not need to make your life easier. Having a camera is great, but some, there are some other things that, you know, you might want to look into. So it's kind of like having a cone with your ice cream. It just makes it better. Okay. So some of those things are... Um, yes, getting a cam, getting a computer to edit, if you want to get into editing, um, a lot of what I'm talking about this whole webinar is not going to talk about editing. It's just really taking a photo, what makes a good photo. Um, that's a whole nother can of worms that you want to open up. But if you do want to edit, if you do want to store your photos onto something, getting a, a computer with some pretty serious uh, RAM or hard drive space might be something for you to look into if you want to get into that realm. Um, getting a bag for your camera and getting a strap for your camera usually comes with a strap, like a basic strap. Um, getting a bag, some, getting some kind of cover. I never, ever, ever leave the house with, with, with just just my camera thrown into my bag. I mean, my, I have children, you could spill it, you could have graham crackers in your bag. So personally, always try to get some type of protective bag. doesn't really matter what you get, they're all kind of protects in different ways, whatever. Um, a lens cover, so I never ever, even if it's the, the, the basic lens that comes with the camera, I never ever leave the house or shoot in any way without this beautiful little thing right here. So this is just a basic lens cover that you can get from Amazon for like five, six dollars. Um, I have had this happen where I dropped my camera on the ground and this has shattered into a million tiny little pieces. And it was $6, throw it away, get another one. But my lens that I spend, I mean even a kit lens that you're gonna get with your camera, even, um, you know, it's gonna be maybe $150 for you to replace that kit lens when you can just replace a $6 piece. So that's just a UV protective filter. Um, there's different degrees of them depending on, I mean I don't even care 
Um, my pro level ones, I get more of the pro level, but honestly, the ones I just take around at the park, $5, $6, totally fine. Um, extra batteries and memory cards. You never want to have a situation where you're like, oh, I filled up my memory card, or oh crap, my battery's dead. So always get an extra battery, always get an extra memory card or two, um, because you never want to be in that situation that you run out. All right. Um, here's what I'm going to talk about. Always try to get at least one prime lens if you are serious about having good shots and you have a DSLR try to get a 35 millimeter 1.8 or a 50 millimeter 1.8 you can probably get them for hundred dollars used um, sell your kit lens to get it because you could totally make all the money back from that um, because like I said before in the little slides the background is going to be so much more buttery they're going to be quicker they're going to be, be great for portraits, so you will thank me later. Oh, thank, oh, oops, spelling, oop, thank, spelling error. And if you do see a lot of spelling errors in here, it's because I work through the night, and I have three kids, so I work at two or three in the morning, so that's why. Okay, sorry, don't hate me. Um, okay, so again, if you want to get into editing, Lightroom is a great, great thing. Um, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom is the real name. Um, you can really edit with very, very small knowledge, um, just moving a little bar over to edit your photos. $9 a month, and it comes with Photoshop for free. Totally worth it. But if you don't want to even go that road, there's um, Google Picasa that edits photos. Um, I've even edited photos on apps on my phone that are free, Fosco and that kind of thing. So um, if you want to get into editing, that might be something for you to look into. Um, a tripod, getting any type of tripod is fine, and a tripod is important because um, shooting at night, you don't want your camera to get blurry, um, you know, cameras could get heavy, so um, definitely having at least one tripod with you um, is good, especially if you want to do some of the more advanced camera tricks, which I'll talk about in the last, last webinar. Okay, alright, let's talk about this. Uh, I kind of touched on this a little bit in the beginning. I'm trying to make this a little zoomed out for you. Ah, there you go. Okay, so um, like I said before, the the lenses. Okay, um, what do the numbers mean? This is just a little recap of what I talked about. The smaller the number millimeter on the lens, the wider angle it is. So this would be uh, 35 millimeter would be a wide angle, as opposed to this that was taken with uh, this big guy. This was a 200 millimeter lens and this was right up close to my son's face. So the bigger the number millimeter is, the closer I am to that person. So that's kind of where, depends on what kind of lens you want for what kind of story you want to tell. Okay, what about the other numbers? The, the 3.5 or 5.6? I talked about that. Um, that's how big the opening of the lens is, and I've shown you that before. It's called the aperture. The smaller the number, the more light comes in. I always get confused why the smaller the number. Maybe it's like the distance between like the, the, the circle to like the opening is like one point. At, that's the only thing I can think about. But um, that's how big the opening is. This first picture of my son, this was taken with like a one a 1.4 opening so the opening was let me show you like this where is it oh, this big so the opening was huge the opening was huge um, you can see it better here the opening was huge to allow a lot of that beautiful natural light in because he was like in the dark sitting with like the, the sun coming up where the last picture was taken at the church my church and it was sunset but I wanted to create that that nice silhouette with the tree branches and the sunset. So that was taken where the opening of the lens was very, very small, 5.6 to allow that silhouette to come in. I didn't want to have a lot of that beautiful natural light. I, I really wanted it to be moody. So that's part of being more advanced and knowing kind of the story that you want to tell. And that was taken with a 50 millimeter, this lens, with it about half, about like this. So I purposely uh, close the opening of the lens 
to allow a lot less light in to create that. So that's what that is. All right. Um, that another reason why getting a prime lens, I cannot emphasize it enough. Getting that beautiful fix fixed lens that doesn't zoom. Um, the smaller the number, the more you can do this effect. This beautiful uh, background effect that kind of just blows out the background. It's called bokeh or bokeh, depending on who you talk to. Right? I, I like to say bokeh. Sorry. Um, but the more creamier background you have, the more bokeh you have. Um, you can't get this from the lens that you get from your camera, which is why I can't emphasize enough. If you really, really want to get images like this, sell your kit lens and buy a prime, 50mm prime or a 35mm prime for like $100, $120. Um, and sell, you know, you'll get the money back. Don't worry. Um, here you go. So imagine your eye, imagine your camera is like your eyes. This is, this is how I remember it. So imagine your camera is like you're controlling a human eye, okay? So the cam, the light comes in through the pupil of the of the lens, enters the brain, which is the camera, the sensor, okay? Um, you're controlling every facet of that light coming into the camera. You're controlling it here with the light coming in. You're controlling how you know how the light is received it's pretty cool um so that's that's personally the the artist the artistic interpretation and I, I love that part of it the science that goes behind it the type of camera would determine how uh clear the picture is so the shutter i'm going to talk about this later but the shutter how fast your camera takes a picture the aperture, the opening of the lens, and the ISO, which is how well your camera sees in the dark, all work together to write your story of your camera. Let's see here. And that, my friends, is day one webinar. Okay, so let's real quick recap. There are different kinds of cameras. Basically, there's the phone camera, the point and shoot camera, the mirrorless camera, which is kind of a new thing now. Um, the DSLR camera. If you want to get pretty good quality images that are super convenient, get a phone. You can go right to social media with it, but then there's some drawbacks. If you want to step that up, then get a point and shoot camera um, to kind of have more of that camera feel, have a little bit more customization, but be able to kind of have that, mm, that feeling of having an actual camera. But it's not as good as um, getting a mirrorless or getting a DSLR. But the, um, the downside to those is obviously the price. You'll have more knowledge you'll have to learn, more things you'll have to, to do with them, more accessories. So if you just want to be as basic as possible, maybe just staying with your phone might be just for you. Maybe learning how to control your phone in a way that is amazing, using light, being creative with that might be great. Um, but if you are shooting in a lot of situations like a ballet recital, you might want to, you know, maybe learn how to use more advanced levels of cameras. So that's kind of day one webinar. Uh, day two to, uh, tomorrow night will be how to control your camera. So let's say you did go out and buy a DSLR, um, which a lot of people have. You will know, like I said before, you will know that there's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of things, and we're going to talk more into how to manipulate your camera to make it work for you. And um, it just reminds me of the story that I, ha I had a friend from way back when, and she, and she was super, super, super into photography. So she went and bought um, $6,000 worth of gear, okay? Um, professional lenses, professional gear, but yet she, she didn't know how to actually manipulate the camera to make it be, make it tell her story. And so, you know, so that, that would be what we're learning about tomorrow. So thank you so much for joining me. Again, this is Crystal Marshall from MarshallArtStudioPhotography.com. You can like me on Facebook, Marshall Art Studio. You can follow me on Instagram, Chica Marsh. Um, but meet me back here tomorrow, 9 p.m., and we will 
check back with you at that time. Let me hop over here. There you go. 